All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Obia Abuti, and I am delighted to be speaking with Sue Stoneman, CEO and founder of NKD. Um, it's International Women's Day, and this year's theme is Choose to Challenge. And Sue's company, NKD, initiated a series as part of their NKD Connect program that saw four incredible women share their story of how they are choosing to challenge and make a difference in women's equality. And Sue uh, clearly is one of many female leaders making an incredible difference in this area. So it's a delight to uh, be able to speak to you today, Sue. Welcome. Hi, Obi. Um, so, Sue, I, I, I'm going to dive straight in. We're going to talk a bit about um, the, the women that you had interviewed as part of this series. But first of all, I'd love to find out why is this topic of women's equality so important to you? Um, I, if I'm brutally honest, um, the topic of women's equality isn't particularly important to me. But I'm fiercely passionate about inequality across the board. Um, so it's not just gender inequality. Um, what really gets me angry is people uh, just being excluded, whether that's because they're a woman, the color of their skin, their religious beliefs, their sexual orientation. The fact that we would exclude people is just plain wrong. It just seems crazy to me. And I, and I think that's if I, if I speak to that rather than to women in particular, um, I think that comes from being brought up in the East End of London. I went to a comprehensive school with about a thousand people um, in the 1970s. Uh, we had every representation from the Commonwealth uh, and I still have many of those friends today. And yet every year, 200 people left that school and a hundred of them became nursery nurses and a hundred of them were told to be uh, car mechanics. And that just seemed wrong that you were writing off a whole generation of people because of their socio-demographic position in, in English society. Um, and I, I just thought it was crazy to be limiting people at such a young age and pigeonholing them um, and just, just unfair unfair to treat people differently and not give them the same chances that everyone else um, could have. And so I think my, my love affair, if you will, with equality, with diversity, with in inclusion, why it's important to see people for who they are and what they are, um, probably stems from there because it just doesn't make sense to me on any level to not do that, to not be inclusive, to not value and celebrate the difference and uniqueness of every human being on, on this earth. Um, because I just think you deny yourself a whole series of resources, either as an individual um, or as a company or a society as a whole, when we don't embrace all of that wonderfulness, all of that creativity, all of that innovation that is held in all of these people, if we decide to put up barriers and it's say who can be involved and who can't be included, it, it just doesn't make sense. So it's not necessarily gender inequality that, that I have a, a, an issue with, it's just inequality per se. And I, and I think the time has come for us to say, quite simply, enough is enough across the board, enough is enough. You, you said fiercely, passionate. <laughs> Your response clearly um, shows that, uh, that there were so many things um, that you said, and I'm sure you could have gone on for ages, but, but people being excluded for uh, different beliefs and not just gender, but race and, and just perspective, who they are, how they show up is sobering. And you talked about limiting people and denying the resources and and the uniqueness and uh, the strengths that they get to bring to not only organizations they may be part of but uh, our world um, I love that that your focus is on us not denying that that this is we miss out by limiting people for whatever reason 
Um, and, and clearly in all of that, there's this side of it, just that the women's equality, and you chose four exceptional women for this interview. In this area, what is it about each of them that inspired you to get them to be part of this conversation? I mean, all, all four women um, I, I asked to come on this journey with us as NKD have um, a, a pretty special place in my heart and in my life um, and have helped to create the, the person that I am. And I think we collectively share a lot of, of the similar, similar beliefs, similar values. But if I try and, it's very hard because all four of them had so much to say, to just try and pick out what makes them special um, on International Women's Day. I think if I start with Linda, I met Linda in 1986. Um, she was my first boss. She and a, another wonderful woman called Philippa Gain. They were my first bosses um, in British Airways. And both of them, and Linda in particular, she says in her interview that she's become a challenger. And as she's matured and aged, um, no, she's matured. Uh, she has become more and more challenging. She's always been like that. She's always stood up for what she believed in and for what she believed was right. Um, and in the days when, when she was a senior leader in British Airways, it was a very male dominated industry. And she was one of very few senior executives who was a woman. And she stood her ground and she did it respectfully and she put her point of view across and she wouldn't just go with the flow. If she had something to say, she would say it. And when people pushed back, she would carry on saying it until they listened. So I know she said she challenges more now. In my eyes, she was, she was always doing that. And I loved her example of Serena Williams and how she dresses and, and I think she said being unapologetic for who she is. Absolutely. I, I've seen Linda over the last 20, 30 years inspire lots of young managers in industries to be themselves and to know that that was good enough and not to apologize mm. for it. So when, when she chose Serena and used that example, for me, it was almost like going full circle of Linda, you've been saying that for years. You may not have known it, but you've been inspiring people in the same same way for, for many years. And then if I, if I look to Regine, who I've known and have been on the DHL journey with for the past 13 years, I think for me, it's, it's that relentless passion in people's potential. And I see Regine as this sort of amazing force for good in the world. Um, the purpose of the organisation she works for is connecting people, improving lives. And that sums up Regine and that sums up all of the programs and systems and processes and training and measurement that she talks about. All of it is about connecting people, connecting women with mentors, connecting people within the business and, and overall improving the lives, not just of the people within DHL Express, but also the people um, that, they, that they connect with as well. So yeah, for me, it's that she just has tons of energy and she doesn't stop. And it is, as I say, it's that belief in human potential for the good of the company, but also she talked a lot about the societal good as well. Um, yeah. And then when I, when I looked at Ella, um, I, I like Ella, I I'm, I'm work with the Princess Trust. So I work with young people from chaotic backgrounds. Um, and I, I share her belief that we have to pay it forward when we're in positions where we have an opportunity to do something for those who don't have those opportunities, who may be being excluded for whatever reasons, we have an innate responsibility to do something, to use our power, to use our position, to use the, the good fortune and that, that has come our way and pay that forward to the next generation. So when she was talking about the Roundhouse and, and what she does there, that resonated. But also that that feeling that you have to get to the root cause and the work that they do to open up the eyes of particularly young women around um, what, what their potential futures could look like. So the work they do with the brownies, with schools, with youth organisations, um, really about telling them it's okay to participate in non-traditional girl type activities, careers. Um, so I think that combination of 
pay it forward and let's get to the root cause of why we have inequality and why people are excluded and um, summing up. And then when I, I turned to Madawi and um, I've always referred to her as a force of nature and, and she is, and all I can say is why does she inspire me? If I had one ounce of her bravery, I'd be a very proud human being because she says what needs to be said and she's been saying it for 35 years that I've known her. She doesn't stop. She knows the price that she has paid and continues to pay for saying what has to be said in society, for speaking out, for not backing down and for trying to change the views and opinions or, on a global basis. And as I say, that, that bravery, that courage, that determination and knowing the price we pay when we do that um, and the example she spoke about but in her own in her own life too um it's a relentless belief in doing the right thing and and Madawi sums that up for me and whenever I talk to her I walk away feeling like I can do more and I must do more because if Madawi is doing that I can do more as well um so yeah that's that's why those four women stood out there was something around inspiring people to believe in themselves, paving the way for the future, for, for the people that are coming after us, a relentless belief in, in people's potential and the bravery to stand up for the things that are right, all creates a society that is much more inclusive, that is much more valuing of difference um, and much more accepting of, of all the joy that that can bring with it. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, interesting just some incredible um messages uh whether it's they stood up for what they believed in their relentless passion in people's potential the need to pay it forward the incredible bravery and what strikes me listening um to you and having spoken with all of them is it's incredible just how the company that we keep and if we have the right perspective as well it can rub off on us because so much of that is in you, Sue. Um, so it's one thing to see that in other people. It's another thing to take it on ourselves and to want to um, let that change us so that we can also be a force for good. So um, incredible to, to see that. Um, and it, interesting that we say for Linda, for example, you talked about the fact that your, your first boss and there was bias and, and things that she was challenging then um, and some of that being still being tackled today what are just on on that topic of of bias whether it's conscious or unconscious what are you still seeing today that still needs to be challenged yeah that, that that's a great question because whilst I said gender bias not not my number one topic you know the the whole um, issue of inequality is I did then start to think about, well, what, what's it been like being a woman in business these past 30 something years? Um, and it took me to a place of, well, yeah, bias, be it conscious or unconscious, must still be around and must still be pretty prevalent because I remember, and in fact, I was, I was with Linda and I'd gone to my very first ever, I'm super excited, senior management group meeting that the chief executive called and the top 500 were allowed to come and there you know there are about three women in the room and strangely they were talking about equality and diversity and they were putting up these statistics and this was 1986 and if my memory serves me correct and it probably does 21 percent of executives in 1986 were female so i thought out of interest i'd google how many uh, females were in executive roles in uh, 2019 and it had risen it was 23 percent so we've gone from 21 percent to 23 percent and that's only that's in 35 years wow. therefore whether I whether I see bias around me it's still got to be there it's still playing out it, it has to be um, because that that's just crazy when I look at those numbers um, and then that got me thinking about something um, I saw maybe about a year ago and it plays to what Bella was saying around you have to get to the root cause and they they showed on TV an experiment I think they re-ran it in 2018 of an experiment that was run in the 1970s and they took 
um, a group of seven-year-old kids and um, an artist just came into the room and said, I want you to draw some pictures for me. And they were asked to draw a firefighter, a surgeon, a pilot, a nurse and a cook. And they did the same to their parents in a separate room. And then obviously people drew that, that, that and then they put them all up on the wall. And, I, you know, the cook was a woman, most chefs are men, so it's crazy. The nurse was a woman. The pilot, the surgeon and the firefighter were all men. Not a single child went outside of those stereotypes. And what's worse, not a single adult did either. Wow. And because I thought, well, the adults are going to be more sensible. They, they, they go to the hospital. They see doctors, you know, they, they should know these things. And, and that just struck me again, that from the 70s to 2018, I think it was, nothing has changed. Those biases are there when you're seven and they play out all the way through to adulthood. So they're being reinforced, whether that's through entertainment, through the media, through the way we're socialized, the way we go to school, education, um, when we get into the workplace, those biases, whether we, whether we like to say that they exist or not, they have to because nothing has changed. So whilst I can't call out specific ones, I mean, I, obviously the pay gap is still there, all the, the, the measures are there. It, for me, it's at that much more deep intrinsic level that society, as a society, we are reinforcing that all the way through subtly and probably unconsciously. Mm -hmm what are the those um the root causes and where is that being reinforced in in homes in conversations um um uh, just in in families uh, in organizations you know what is why is it not being challenged um and that does raise a, an important point about what can be done and, and what should be done to address this and so you know that that would be a question for you what in addition to this series clearly but what else are you doing what else is NKD doing to to take action and establish equality and see some change in the percentage uh, that we're talking about here yeah I mean I the, the whole purpose of, of NKD is is to make the world of work better and you, you only make the world of work better by making the individuals that make up the world of work better um, and I I I'd like to think all of our all of our work is targeted in some degree at building tolerance and acceptance and celebration of difference within the workplace. So whether we dress that up as listening and questioning, you know, um, whether we call it influencing skills and look at um, how you look at a, a wider range of views and opinions, we find unique ways of basically just trying to say how do we help people be more curious about other people that are around them in our case in the workplace um, and if they're curious about them how do we make them excited by the differences that they see rather than scared by them and, and frightened of them and um, how do we make them understand the benefits that come like i said right at the beginning that, that wealth of resource that organizationally you are denying yourself if you don't embrace difference. Again, whether that's different cultures, different races, different genders, doesn't matter, but you're, you're just cutting off a whole raft of creativity and innovation for your own organization, for your customers and, and for, the, for the world at large. So it, it just seems crazy. So. I think in, in terms of implicitly, our work is targeted at, at that. Explicitly, we have decided that this year is, is our year to really nail um, diversity and inclusion, education, um, training. Um, we're gonna be pioneering and piloting a lot of different and innovative ways to get people to join in that conversation. We, we've worked in that space before. I think we can do more. I know we can do more. Um, and so we've really targeted um, that that's going to be a key focus for us. If, if I could leave a legacy to NKD, it would be that we open people's eyes to the wonderfulness of diversity and 
the incredible benefits of creating more inclusive societies. So that's that's our aim specifically in the business. And um, as, as an individual, I will continue to work with the Prince's Trust. And I'm I'm always inspired by uh, I'm working with two young young ladies at the moment whose whose backgrounds are pretty chaotic, and yet they have this belief and passion and drive. Um, but society says they shouldn't be setting up their own business because of where they've come from and the experiences that they've either had or not had. Um, and it's just a joy to work with individuals like that and say, well, how can I give you some of what I've learned along the way? And how can I help you create what you're trying to create? Um, and I'll, I will, I'll continue to do that and continue to, to, I think, within NKD, create a safe space for everyone to be to be themselves to be their wonderful unique quirky crazy selves and feel safe and feel comfortable to talk about whatever they want to talk about whenever they want to talk about it so yeah that's that's what we'll be doing i love it um i love the the focus on, on walking the talk you know clearly this broadly just the, the potential of people and and people living their best and being their best is something you're passionate about but hearing all that you've shared it's not just a nice rhetoric and idea it, it's a reality for you both in terms of what NKD is doing and also um, just the one-to-one -one conversations that you get to have and, and you've reinforced something that hopefully people listening today just going back to if you are not doing this if you are not helping all people be at their best then there is a wealth of resource that you are denying your organization, you're denying your um, community, you are denying our world if you are not helping people live at their best. And I couldn't help but feel as you described the work of NKD, you know, hundreds of thousands through different clients that NKD work with, hundreds of thousands of lives have been touched. And, and the fact that you were able to say that, you know, for, in most of those cases, it's, it's one individual. If we're helping open their eyes to more tolerance and celebration, acceptance, um, I won't tell this story now, but many of the people listening will be familiar with the starfish story and just think, do you know what? We've made a difference to that one. And yeah. we've made a difference to that one. And, and that's what you're doing through NKD and, and through your work with the Prince's Trust. Um, so brilliant to hear. Sue, before I let you go, It'd be great if, are there any final words of wisdom, thoughts, pearls, insights, just to share with those that will listen to this? Um, what final thought would you want to leave them with? I, I've got a couple. Um, on International Women's Day, we, we were having a, a virtual chat and I saw in my own team some of the, the younger women um, talking about how they still find it difficult in the workplace and in society generally um, to have a voice and how they are still being put down in a humorous way and there's still a lot of sexist humor and that they they just didn't feel that they could speak up about not not in our workplace I hasten to add but they, they didn't feel that it was okay to call people out when they're using humor to, to lessen that individual, either to them being done unto themselves or they see it done to other people. And that, you know, that, that it's okay for guys in particular to use sexist humor and, and put downs and, you know, when, when you park the car and, you know, your other half says, oh, that's okay, I can walk from here, commenting on your parking ability. Um, you know, th those are all, subtle put downs that I think make women shrink um, and and to the to the girls and the ladies that I saw writing that I would just say it's not okay so don't think it's okay because it's not and you do have a voice and you can speak up um, and certainly for for the the ladies in NKD we'll do something to help people find find that voice and um, I think an, another thing is I, I would say, as I, I, I think Linda said the same thing, as I get closer towards the end of my career, I think about people starting theirs. Um, and, and to all of those people younger than myself who 
can make probably they've got longer so they can make a bigger difference than than i can is to say you know the future is yours anything is possible don't be apologetic for who you are because you're wonderful have a voice and make change happen and don't do the thing that i hear and the, that i'm finding more and more annoying is i hear people say oh yeah but i don't see color i don't see gender and what i want to say to you is see it see it for all its wonderfulness embrace it celebrate its uniqueness and remember at the end of the day we all belong to one big universal family and and don't hide be out there say what you've got to say and just make the world a better place because when when we do embrace diversity when we do include people um when we don't find reasons to shut people out and we let people in then then the light shines and then that's then we've we've done what we were put here to do um so yeah that's all i would say some uh, incredible final words there. Um, it, it's not okay to be put down. Don't apologize for being you. See the incredibleness in everyone. Thank you so much, Sue. Great to speak with you and wishing everything that you're doing um, all the best and all the success. Thanks, Obi. Take care.